think it's okay, open. Um, hi, Ethan. Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing great. That's what's okay, up. Okay, so um, beautiful this is actually my first time going live on a Facebook group, so I'm trying to get it right. I'm having... Yeah. So, is there an um, echo? For those of us um, who will be coming on the show, on the live show, I think it's um, pertinent that I tell you about the Black Pilgrimage Movement. So, the Black Pilgrimage Movement was breathed for it because of a need. Yeah, the need to connect Black people all over the world. So, um, on today's live event, we'll be talking about some of the some essential tips for people who are actually traveling for the first time to Africa, to any country in Africa. So um, on the show with me here is, um, my name is Oluchi, for some of you that don't know me. And um, I'm actually one of the hosts for Black Pilgrimage Movement. And with me here is Itan Brisby. Um, he's um, one of our Black brothers who is very, very passionate about the Pan-African movement. And he's very passionate about motherland Africa. He's one of the very few people and he's well informed as a last year he stayed like three two to three months in kenya but some countries in east africa and he has a lot to share like very very important tips that would be very needful so um Ethan, i just think um you should introduce yourself properly to the people while i try to fix this okay, okay. yeah now nah, thank you uh for having me um, yeah, my name is, like she said, my name is Ethan Brisby, and I have been to East Africa two times now uh, for like maybe three months over the past year, and it's been incredible. So I'm looking forward to sharing anything that I know to help other people as they prepare for the process, to also help bridge the gap between, you know, um, Africans that live on the continent and things they might want to know about. Okay, so um, I was asking, I said I um, would like to... You introduce to get no, to know more about you like a proper introduction about you okay I think that goes back but yeah like i was saying a moment ago like you mentioned my name is is ethan uh and i'm from texas i traveled to uh uganda and kenya both last summer and then christmas i was there for like 12 weeks total of the two times and it was incredible Best experience I ever had in my life. Um, wow. So, outside of being a father, you know, I have one child, but other than that, going to Africa is life changing. And I really look forward to not only helping African Americans learn more about the continent of Africa, but also helping Africans that still live on the continent learn about African Americans because okay. I've learned that we don't really know each other. Okay, okay. That's, that's great. So, um, too many people actually have show, turned up and said they are interested in this trip. Some people did not tried it before. So, like, the first time you actually made the decision to come to Africa, what was it like? You taking a step and making that decision to visit Africa? Wow. I was nervous, to be honest with you. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but the first time I went, I flew directly from JFK Airport in New York. The Nairobi Kenya was a 14 hour flight and landed. It was like this awakening, like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm actually on African soil. And then from there, you know, I just started to navigate my way to where I was staying, learning about food. I had to get the right money. Um, I just, I kept my American ego at the door because life is different, you know. And, but um, I was able to have the time of my life just because I was there, free, ready to experience. Okay. Um, I really apologize for the dark. Like, why the, my video is really dark because there's no light here, as usual. Nah, good. You good? I can. We can see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So um, apart before you took this the this decision to take the trip, but first, what were your fears? What were your worries? If you had any. Were the things you were thinking about? Because I've heard people say that um, they're scared of malaria, but malaria is is a common thing all over Africa. But it's not as dreaded. It's not even as bad as COVID. Yes, there's some terrible ailments that are way worse than the malaria. It's, so, like, how did you? What were your fears when you first made your decision to come to 
Africa, Eastern Africa. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Okay. My fears when I when I first, a lot of it was the stereotypical stuff that you hear as you know, as American, you hear about like you said disease. You hear about um, petty crime. You just hear just the the thing that far away from home, all that kind of stuff. But once I got there, I created my own experience. Of course, you know, illness is everywhere. I do know people that have gotten malaria. I've been fortunate, you know, by the grace of God, I didn't have to keep out with malaria. Um, I wouldn't be the expert to tell somebody how to prepare, like taking pills and stuff before you go or shot, because I just went. I didn't take any shots other than I had to take a, um, a yellow fever shot at the airport in Uganda because they wouldn't let me in the country. But oh. other than that, I just went. And I did everything. I ate everything. I was in the woods. Like I said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend people do the path I went because you might have different health conditions. You might need to get some certain shots and, you know, prepare for malaria. But so far, I've been grateful and fortunate that, you know, no kind of sickness has come upon me. And I ate all the food. Oh wow, that's that's different. I, yeah, so most last month I had my friend call. My friend was in Lagos and he was not that open minded about the food, but he loved the experience. So you said something that really um thrilled me. You said you it was one of your best experience. Like you said it was your best the best experience of your life. You said something like so what made this your journey so interesting? Oh um, we got some ambulance around right now but for me what made it my best experience um really just being a black man you know because y'all know you know the history a little bit about america we're here on tv about racism and things like that so yeah. what made it so amazing was that my black skin actually was the why i fit in you know the first time in my life that my black skin wasn't what you know kind of made me different so i want to get that off the table First, I was so grateful just to be where I, if I could trace my family lineage, you know, I, I came from there. Even though, Juliet, one thing people always ask, they're like, you know, what tribe are you? What tribe are you? And I don't know, you know, as African-American, we really don't, many of us, you know, some of us have traced it, but we don't really know our tribe. And that's the only thing that kind of bothers me a little bit. But it was an incredible experience because... There was so much love. There was incredible food. The weather was perfect. And, you know, the people, you know, the people, they just, it was just so authentic. Oh, that's lovely. Um, um, there's something like, there was about some time ago, I think last year, there was this argument on Twitter, like, like how that Africans don't really accept them. African black American people, like African Americans. So what do you think? How were the people, how was the reception you got? From the people what was the reception like how did they receive you when you came you know like i said it was the people that actually made the uh the experience so great um i don't agree with that i mean obviously there's some bad in every bad some you know there might be some africans that don't like african americans there might be some african americans that don't get along for africans but by and large what i found is that the experience itself was it was rewarding because there's a level of curiosity. I think that's what really um, opened the door for the experience to be so great because we were uh, equally curious about each other. Oh, great, great. Um, yeah, so um, apart from that, um, what other thing would you like to share? There's something that really drew, drew me to you when I first sent you the message. I checked your profile and I saw you doing something really good. The, your, the Shift um, Foundation, your, the, the foundation you started. Uh, what inspired you to start it and how did it begin in your short time in Africa? How oh, okay. You, yes. So what I did when I went to Africa, um, I, I took my youth organization. So I work with youth and we are uh, helping... East Africans specifically launch online businesses. So I've been full team in America um, for about three years, an entrepreneur for you know ten years. So I took my foundation shift, which stands for save your money, help your family, imagine your goals, follow directions, and think. Accurate. So we have a virtual school now that we operate. 
gotten, well, it's all over, but primarily gotten a kid. And so at the end of five week session, we now fund at least one new business from the students that go through our program. And so we've had a winner from the Congo, DRC, and a winner from Uganda. And so we're hoping to continue and then see other places as well. And I think Africa, and I think that's one of the things we'll bring uh, is that we have this, like, there's this American mind that I think when you apply it in the continent where there's so much opportunity, I think that great combination. I think we can all do really good things together if we really, for those people that are committed. Yes, okay. That, like what you just said, in Lagos, for example, you have so many foreign nationals. You have Chinese, you have um, Turkish people. Why these people are actually setting up um, industries and companies and trying to take over the market? But we, re we rarely see um, Black Americans or Blacks in diaspora come to Africa. The truth is that it's not really their fault, but the mainstream media has really painted Africa as this um, dead zone. And there are too many um, false beliefs, like you don't go there, this is a no-go area. Africa is not the best place per se, but Africa is beautiful in a way, like you said, you said it was the best experience of your life. That really made me feel good <laughs> because most of the times we hear um, um, negative stories from people. So like, um, what do you think? How do you think um, Black Americans, um, other Blacks in diaspora, because we have too many Black people in countries like Brazil, Colombia, everywhere, all over the world, blacks are littered. African American Africans are people of Afro descent. Let me just put it that way. Are everywhere. So, um, so what do you think? What can you say to this? How do you think African Americans can try to make Africa a better place, more attractive for people to? How do I think African Americans can improve the think... Africa? Just contribute to Africa. First of all, I guess when you think about the idea of, of, of quote unquote making Africa a better place, first of all, is we got to first get to know and, and build relationships with you know Africans that are currently living, that are born, and have lived their entire life on the continent. I always do when I get off the plane is I check my American ego at the door. Um, sometimes the internet might go out. Sometimes the power might go out. So we first have to understand the way of life. Of and course. Then, you know, once we understand the way of life, then that's whenever you can come in. You have uh, you educated at, you know, a great institution. You have some sort of maybe have money that can go a long way. I think the best thing we can do as Black Americans for the continent is first understand people there, build relationships, bring our money, and then, you know, we can match up. We don't want um, don't just go in somebody's house and, and start telling them how to make, you know, ain't no kid, ain't no good Ghanaian gonna come tell them how to make jollof rice. So we don't come over there and tell people how to live. We first need to know how life is being lived and what are the problems as you can, then we can make some solutions. Okay, okay. That's very brilliant. That's why I empower my students, right? That's why the young people in East Africa that go through my program, I tell them what are the problems you see. What can you do to solve the problems of your community so we don't have the French man or the Portuguese man or the French man coming down, taking advantage of all this opportunity on the continent? You know, let's train and understand, use ourselves, and then we can use our own ingenuity. That's what we really need. Otherwise, we're going to always be taken advantage of. That goes for black people in America and Africans living on the continent. Okay. Okay, let's um, talk more about um, you, you told me about this. Um, tip on how to you talked about booking your flights and you said something how to get it cheap and all that so for people who want to make the decision what were the steps you made that made your decision easy you're coming to africa easy like what were the steps you, you took some of the things you did okay yeah yeah so the way the so what i did and so i've traveled quite a bit you know domestically U.S. So my travel strategy is this, and so I try to plan. And if you like it, and you can apply it. So I buy one way. Like if I know I'm going to Lagos, or if I'm going to Nairobi in June, I would buy a one-way ticket. You know, for example, from New York to JFK. And I, 
I might catch that one way flight on sale for four hundred bucks. Okay. I'll spend, I spent my I spent my two tickets last time I went were like eight dollars total, and usually people are paying like you know double that for the trip. So my, anyway, my suggestion is to purchase a direct flight one way. I think to go to Legos. I think Atlanta has a direct flight. And I think maybe Washington, D.C. might have a direct flight to Lagos. And so I would buy the direct flight direct from America to the continent, but I think I would buy a one-way ticket there, and then maybe a month later, I buy a one-way ticket back and try to catch them at a dip, just like, a, at the, like, just like if you're buying stocks. Buy the dip. So buy the ticket when they're at a dip. One way there, one way back. Of course, of course. And because, because, and some people are afraid to do that. Like, oh my gosh, a one way ticket. As long as you have a one way ticket back, by the time you're fine. And here's my when I was in Kenya last time, I didn't have it. I bought it when I got ready to go back home. Everybody won't be able to do that, but I'm, I'm saying that that's one way to save. But more specifically, I really hope more people get direct flights. When I go to Europe first, you can go straight from the U.S. right to the country. There's about seven or eight direct flights. Okay, okay. Um, thank you for that. So, about your stay, uh, what, what were the most fascinating places you had to... Where were the most fascinating places you visited throughout your stay? The places you visited, uh, remarkable places. CP Falls, CP Falls, and I'll type it in the in the chat. It's a place in Uganda called CP Falls. Uh, that was amazing. Um, I went to in Kenya. You see people taking the photos of the giraffe manor, where the giraffe uh, are stay. You can stay there. It's like a hotel. Yes. Uh, a friend of mine is a real estate developer, and he's actually doing a project at the giraffe manor. So I got to go like behind the scenes and see how it really works. That was really neat. Um, the number one place I went to that I fell in love with, I haven't been to West Africa yet, Julia. You got to forgive me. I haven't been to West Africa. I'm looking forward to coming. Okay. But the number one place, the number one place was Mombasa. Mombasa is like Miami. For the people that are American, if you've been to Miami, you know Miami. Mombasa, Kenya, it's just like it's on a thousand. And have a good time. Beautiful people. I was backstroking in the Indian Ocean. Why some dude was washing his camel. Like, I was like, what? I'm in the ocean, and he's bathing his camel. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of light. But, yeah, I would say those places, Mombasa, CP Falls, and the behind-the-scenes look at the Giraffe Manor. But everything about it was fantastic, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm African-American, and I really like the African part of my existence. So being on the continent, everything about it wasn't good. Oh, okay, okay. Um... Um, what, last month I was with this Clark Caesar. Clark Caesar is on this group, and one thing I noticed about the people in the at the market is they actually when they hear your American accents, they just okay, this is an American. And well, so what was the feeling like? Did you experience something like that in your time in Kenya? Uh, you about to get hustled for sure because <laughs> when you and, I'm, and not you know what I'm saying I don't want. That's not a, I'm not trying to. I'm just keeping it real. You hear when people that the only thing, the only thing that doesn't make me Kenyan, the only thing that doesn't make me Ugandan, the only thing that doesn't make me is this act, this language. Okay, okay. Right? So when I'm at the market, I'm like, how much is that? Oh, hey. So you know, I'm actually learning my Swahili right now because I don't want to go back to Kenya and not at least be able to speak the local language. Um. <laughs> So that would be a recommendation. You don't have to know the um the language, but that American accent, you just have to be with somebody that you know can help protect you, or just know you're gonna probably pay a little bit more than the regulars until or unless you find somebody. Hey, hey, until unless you find somebody that you know you can trust. Okay, okay, sure, sure. So um. About the movement we just started, I'm really hoping you would join us on one of our trips because um, we are hoping to have so many people have showed interest, like I said. They're having a trip in June to Lagos, um, Nigeria, and another one in November to Ghana. So what would you say 
about the movement. What, what, do, what do you think about the Black pilgrimage movement? It's not just about group trips. It's about um, making people connect to the land, to motherland Africa. These days, we find too many people coming in, resettling. I've spoken to someone who is interested in coming to retire in one state in Nigeria. There are people who want to invest and actually start life in African countries. So um, what addition can you um, give uh, on, about the movement we just started, reconnecting people back to Africa, motherland Africa? Yeah. I would say the first thing is consistency. And just because, like, you and I, that's how we met. Like, you discovered me because I had been on the continent. Um, I think back to people that need to be in America, we say not all kin folks are kin folks, right? You know, just because we have the same skin complexion, I mean, we we got the same intent. So, what I hope for the movement is that we find people that really, you know, want to be in touch and tune with the content, and that we can have some economic development opportunities, not just experience where you go and take photos and post them, but like some people might really want to come over and stretch their American dollars or. You know, this even in Uganda, we have a program like it's so small, little bitty thing. Like for like twenty dollars a month, buy like eight girls like a hat whenever you know for this. It's, just, it's something simple as that. Twenty bucks and now eight little girls because you know little bitty stuff we don't realize in America is like if a girl don't have any cash, she can't even go to school. And so people begin to fall back. But if, if I can spend twenty dollars and I have girls but now they have to miss school so it's we don't we're not trying to save the world we're not trying to like change anything we just just get out here and keep it above just go do real stuff so that's what i hope people will do because that's what i'm passionate about I'm down with what you're doing i would love to help to make sure more people get that experience you know then open eyes and not like so many people just blinded by lies you know just be open man out there and fly. That's okay. how, I hope it makes sense, but that's that's what I. Okay, well, thank you so much. So, um, for those people on the live channel, um, I don't know if there are people you have any question to ask. Itan is actually here to <laughs> help us with some of the things. What are your fears? What do you think you need to know? You can please drop your question if you have any. We would gladly yes, if answer already got your passports you got you know you need visas what kind of questions do people have okay yes then I, I need to talk about it's very necessary i talk about this trip to lagos because i find too many people make decisions they say oh we want to go let's go let's go let's go but you find if you have 100 people saying at the end of the day you find very few people making real steps and making the decision so for this event i actually sent out an email i sent out a broadcast so if you're actually you actually want to be on the summer group trip to Lagos. I will be dropping a link on the group so where you can actually schedule a meeting, a one on one meeting with me. Then we we'll start the process. Nigeria, I don't know. Did you, ha did you write an invitation letter? Did someone have to write an invitation letter for you to come to Kenya? Yeah, when I went, when I went to Ghana, somebody did have to write a letter. Okay. When I, when I, somebody did have to write a letter. Give me one. I'm doing an interview for the people. Oh, okay. I'll come back. My okay. bad, my auntie came. Okay, okay. So, um, actually, it's come to Nigeria. You need an invitation letter, and I think 24 hours before it's the same all over the world. You have to take your COVID um, test, and also you need to book your flight like the way the the tip you just gave us one way ticket if, for those people who would want to try it. The major thing is just making the decision. Then also, um, it's very important that you make a deposit before the before the first of May, so we can know if you're actually coming for this trip. It's one thing to say you are coming, then it's another thing to make real, take real um, steps to doing it. We're hoping people come to um, for this, and we want to make this a lifetime experience for people. Yes, we don't just want you to we want you to come and experience it. What are some of the things that are going to happen on the trip? How many days is it? Um, okay, okay, okay. What's, what's some of the, 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 the things on the itinerary? Okay, it's, it's actually a, an eight-day trip. 
It's going to be for eight days. And we'll be going to some of the remarkable places in Lagos. Lagos is, okay, let me just tell people about Lagos. Lagos is one of the busiest cities in Africa, very populated, the smallest state in Nigeria, but the most populated state. So Lagos is another world on its own. It's rough. Some people in Nigeria will say it's rough, but it's not really rough. Either. And we also have um, places like um, Banana Island. Banana Island is one of the most expensive um, places to be, places in the whole of Africa. Like you have the rich people, the very rich people in Africa staying there. So Lagos is really interesting. We'll be at the Makoko slums. Makoko slum is somewhere, is, is like a floating village. We have houses, you have churches, schools on water. The only means of, of transportation is canoes. They have like boys who paddle the canoe and drive people to their homes. So um, we're going to Makoko slums. We'll be um, taking a trip to the Badagri Heritage Museum. Badagri is one of the places that had um, the highest migration of slaves. Like the transatlantic slave traders had too many um, contacts with Badagri. So we have all the slave history in Badagri. Just like you have, um, in, I think, um, El Elmina Castle and the rest in Ghana. That Badagri is where you have the history there. So we'll be going to learn so many things about at, the, at that place. Then also we'll be having um, a traditional naming ceremony. It's getting really dark here. I think I should just go outside. Yeah, so we'll be having like a traditional naming ceremony. There are some people who actually have, um, there are some people who have actually done their DNA, DNA test. They did like a DNA test and they might actually want to get African names and we'll be helping them do that. We do like the proper traditional naming ceremony with the costumes and everything. But you first need to make the decision to come to Africa. That's the most important thing. So, um, what I'm about uh, the, the Ghana trip? What if somebody wants to go to Ghana? What's that trip like? The trip to Ghana will be in November. We've not really made serious plans for it, but for Nigeria, we just it's written down and my system is inside though. But we have a seven days plan lined up for it. The first day you would be landing, the first day is for arrivals. Then the second day will be at the Lekki Conservation Center. That's like, it's a rainforest in Lagos State. And you have monkeys, you have crocodiles, you have wildlife, and a lot of other things. And a lot of other things. So, there's so much noise outside, but it's fine. No, that's okay. How do some, um, how would somebody um how would somebody uh let you know they're serious? What's the first step somebody needs to make to uh be a part of the trip? That's what we have to deal with. Electricity problems. Like I would have It's all good, it's real life. Right now, right now the um our generator got bad and they're trying to repair it. So this is my neighborhood. This is where I live. So this is the right thing. So we're hoping people get on this trip and Ed, and thank you so much for being on this um, live channel. Nah, I love yeah. it. I'm I'm I remember when we first met we're and you told me that you had this idea. Yes, we're hoping to get more people who can talk to people and encourage people to take the decision. So um I'll be dropping a link after this for those of us who got seven or eight people is implementing to five to eight people. This live um, video, but if you're interested in the Lagos team, I'll be dropping a link where you can actually schedule a one on one meeting. With you. So, Ethan, nice to have you on the show on the live event. Absolutely, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, I look forward to help to doing anything I can. If you want to have me again, just let me know. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me, okay. That's not that's the internet. Okay, but since then, I think we'll be having another show um, by next week Saturday. I'm hoping I get someone who's really interesting to, to educate. Okay, I think you have a question. Really insightful this session I have. So till then, take care. I'll be dropping the link just after this. Hey, Juliet, Juliet, can you hear me? You said I can't hear you. Cynthia, if you can There's hear so me. There's so much noise outside. Okay. 
I don't know if Cynthia can hear me, but you would. The best departure yeah, city for Lagos is Atlanta, Atlanta or or uh, or Reagan, which is I A D. You can go, I think, straight from Atlanta to Lagos, or you can go from Reagan to Lagos. Cynthia, to answer your question. Okay, okay. So I'll just drop the link after this this live. I'll drop the link, and anybody who is interested can actually get a meeting with me or Clark Caesar. You have a meeting with us. So thank you, Ethan, for being on this live event. All right, thank you. If anybody so has any other questions for me, I'm in the group, so shout me out. Until then, love, peace, and okay, Thank you so much. Yeah, bye. Thank you.